I'm Deacon Keith Fournier, and on October 4th, we celebrate the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, one of the most beloved saints, beloved by everyone, Catholics, other Christians, all kinds of people, often associated with animals, and understandably so. Francis had a love for all of God's creation. One of his greatest prayers, brother, son, sister, moon. He saw that creation was a gift from God and we were stewards of that creation. He's also responsible for the creche, the nativity scene, which has become so popular, especially in Western Christianity. He wanted to make the birth of the savior of the world real. And so animals and hay and all of that, which we celebrate to this day. But Francis was about more than sentiment and piety. He was a heroic Christian man. And his story needs to be told afresh. It had a great effect on my life. He died at the age of 44, relatively young from contemporary standards, in the year 1226 in Assisi, Italy. And Francis did not always have the passionate love for Jesus Christ, which characterized his later life. He went off to war, and it devastated him. He came back, and while in recovery and probably a form of depression, he began to turn back to God. He went to pray in a chapel where there was a crucifix of Saint Damien. It was a beautiful corpus of Jesus and it was surrounded with images and iconography and it was found in Saint Damien's chapel. And while Francis was praying, he heard the Lord speak to him from that crucifix. Francis, go and rebuild my church which, as you can see, is falling down in ruins around you. Francis began to devour the New Testament, and he took seriously the call of the Lord Jesus to sell everything and follow him. And he decided that that inspired voice that spoke to him from the cross at St. Damien's had a mission for him to accomplish. And so he returned to his rather wealthy father and gave up his inheritance and took his place among the poor. And he began to preach the gospel of Jesus without reserve, demonstrating a living faith at a time when the church was dying, was corrupted, and desperately in need of a dynamic infusion of the Holy Spirit. And what happened, and it's happened throughout history, is because this one little poor man, and by the way, that's what they called him, Il Pavarello, the little poor man, because this one little poor man lived the gospel, didn't just talk, but walked the gospel, others were drawn to the Jesus they saw in him. And they began to rebuild broken down churches around the area so that they could care for those who no one else wanted any longer, the sick, the poor, the rejected. And over time, Francis began to understand that the call of the Lord had a deeper meaning. He was called to rebuild the whole church, which was desperately in need of renewal from the bottom up. Now, Francis was a layman. In fact, he was never ordained to the holy priesthood. He lived a holy life, however, and God worked powerfully through him. And as Brothers gathered around him. The townspeople, the simple people, loved him. Unfortunately, those in power, both in the secular and the ecclesial arena, didn't. And Francis suffered persecution because he took the gospel seriously. He lived it to the root. And by the way, that is what the word radical means. So yes, he was radically Christian. And he had to put up with this kind of persecution, even from clerics, from priests, and indeed, bishops. But he decided the Lord had a different plan, and he went off to Rome to speak to the Pope. Now, of course, most people thought he had lost his mind, but Francis believed the Holy Spirit would take care of him and these brothers, because they were living the words of Jesus Christ. And in fact, the Holy Spirit did take care of them. They eventually got in to see the Pope, and something wonderful happened, and I'll paraphrase it, but it's worth reading. The Pope was so moved by Francis that the night after he met him, he had a dream. And in the dream, 
he saw this little poor man with St. Peter's Basilica on his shoulder, holding up the church. And he summoned him back. And when Francis went to show his reverence to the Pope, the Pope knelt down and kissed the feet of Francis. A sign of a dramatic humility and conversion. And that new community of Christians, later called Franciscans, was given the blessing of the church. And it grew, and it grew. Single men forsaking marriage for the gospel gathered as brothers. Single women forsaking marriage for the gospel gathers as sisters. And families wanting to live the Christian life in the way Francis did also gathered. And we still have remnants of that today with religious communities of Franciscans, men and women, and third order or secular Franciscans living the rule of Francis. Now, why is this important for you and for me? Because in our day and age, we need heroes of the faith. We need saints. Francis ended up being canonized and we love him today, but we don't remember his story. He faced great opposition and he took his relationship with Jesus seriously. And he fell in love with the Lord. He was a man of great prayer. He had a great impact in my own life when I wandered my way back into the heart of the church. And he can have a great impact on your life. But I believe what he would want more than anything else is for you to turn more deeply to Jesus and to realize that every one of us are called to be saints. The word saint simply means faithful ones, holy ones. Now, Francis was never ordained to the priesthood. Some accounts indicate he was ordained as a deacon, but he never felt worthy to be ordained to the priesthood. He lived a radical gospel humility. We need to live that kind of humility today. No matter what our state in life, no matter what our particular vocation, no matter what our job, every one of us is called to be a saint to live for Jesus, and to do in this day and age what Francis and the brothers and the sisters and the families who followed him did in his day and age. A great renewal took place in the church as a result of this little poor man of Assisi. And in fact, that has been the pattern throughout history. This lay movement, this lay renewal movement filled with the Holy Spirit became a seed which generated a new life into the church of Jesus Christ. So on this October 4th, as we remember Francis of Assisi, let us hear the same call he heard. Go and rebuild my church. Let us ask for his prayers and let us follow his example. We need saints and heroes for this new missionary age. God bless you all.